Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. This one is for Monday the 23rd of January going through until Sunday the 29th of January 2023. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to go through each day of the week to see what the planets are doing, how they interact with one another and what energy that creates. The point of these horoscopes is to try and understand that energy so that you can use it to your advantage. And these horoscopes look at the planets and what they're doing. They apply to all signs of the zodiac. So this is like a general overview of the stars without a particular focus on each sign. So it's a general um, astrological kind of weather report. Okay, so the thing I noticed about this week is that, especially in the first three days of the week, there's going to be this very strange, almost hypnotic, dreamlike state that comes in, and you go in and out of that all week. So anything then that has to do with the higher realms or creativity or healing is massively supported this week. So let's start with Monday the 23rd then. We've got the moon in Aquarius. That makes you very interested in education and teaching and scientific kind of thinking, looking at what could be. It conjuncts Saturn and Venus in Aquarius. So this is amazingly creative now for people who work in education or in um who are looking to invent new products. It's very kind of inspirational. The moon then goes into Pisces at 6.36 in the afternoon. The moon moving into Pisces is, it goes from the element of air, Aquarius. So it is about communication and ideas and exchanging ideas. The moon in Pisces is very much about the spiritual realm and love and connection and looking at the bigger picture. So it immediately softens and becomes very, very creative and spiritually connected. The Pisces moon then squares Mars and Gemini. So that the mental image I'm getting with that is like spiritual energy coming into you and then being articulated via Mars and Gemini. So Monday, if you are a creative person, get busy. You'll be able to make a lot of progress. So with all the air energy at the beginning of the day, I would say that for the majority of Monday the 23rd, you're kind of in inventor mode and you'll be able to problem solve very well. If you do work as a writer, as an artist, as a teacher, it's the perfect time to plan new lessons or to get started on those first few chapters of your book or screenplay. Um, later on in the day, your creativity joins in via the moon in Pisces. Anything, therefore, that makes you feel connected will be amplified on this day. So it's a great day for readings, getting readings, doing them. Um, Reiki, same thing, mediumship, channeling, anything that involves the spiritual realms and you kind of actively engaging with them. On Tuesday, the 24th of January, we've got the Pisces moon now forming a conjunction with Neptune in Pisces. So Neptune rules Pisces. So first of all, it's very happy to be in that sign. But the moon is also in Pisces. So it's all about your feelings. It's all about your dreams. It's all about what's going on in the inner world. And that is offering you a lot. So it's important to pay attention to those things, to express them creatively if that is something that you have a desire to do, or even just to understand your inner workings better by putting them down on paper or um, paint on, a, on, on canvas or anything like that. The Pisces moon also squares Mars and Gemini, so that's very articulate, communicative, and ready to kind of move forward. It's also still very good at problem solving and, and communicating. So all of those things um, apply to your connection with the higher realms, but also to other people, I would say. And it textiles Mercury in Capricorn and Uranus in Taurus. So that gives me the sense that you're much more interested in changing what already is and improving upon it rather than... Um, continuing on in the same vein as you have before. So you're willing to change. And because you're operating all, on all these different levels, idea-wise, you're inspired. Intuitively, you're inspired. <laughs> I keep doing this, but it's almost like you can suss out any kind of circumstances in your life by just having a feel as such, like just extending yourself emotionally and trying to get the answer that way, as well as looking at all the information. The Sun in Aquarius sextiles Jupiter and Aries, which is so combustible. So the Sun is your identity that you're striving towards, right? In Aquarius, it is very focused on um, new ideas and what could be. And Jupiter is the lucky planet. It's the planet of expansion and growth. And in Aries, it says, I want to do something that I care about. 
So you couple that with Aquarius. What is the information and the what are the ideas that interest you and that you want to work with or build upon or whatever it may be? So on Tuesday, the dream state continues and you're very able and <laughs> you don't lose your ability to connect with others, but you're able to connect with other people very, very well. So it's all about connection with all this water in the chart, whether you're connecting with your higher self through meditation or you're talking to a group of friends. It's all about that closeness and that intimacy that you're really able to tap into. So you work well with others and connect well with others. Um, your own creativity is obviously amplified and your higher self is very accessible to you. So if there's any kind of spiritual work that you feel you want to do, Tuesday is an amazing day for it. If there has been a lack of inspiration or enthusiasm in your life, you can rediscover it today by, by tapping into your feelings and again, the, the image I'm getting is that by kind of going inward, you get that spark back, that fire appears, and that then extends into giving you lots of options for change. So specifics, actuals. So I'm looking around my job. This isn't ideal. Maybe I can shift in this direction to be happier in my everyday routine. Whereas before, there would have been just like, okay, this is it. I don't have any other plans. So by giving yourself options, you see, you give yourself a greater sense of freedom. Your ability to connect, it extends to institutions and groups of people. So if there's anything you want to get done, do reach out for help and for collaboration and mentorship and every kind of useful interaction with others that will allow you to get to where you want to go. Wednesday, the 25th of January, we've got the Pisces moon forming still the conjunction with Neptune in Pisces. So the spiritual world is just huge and you really feel it. So it's important to, well, I think it's important to, when, when things open up like this, to kind of lean into yourself and to see what is going on within, within me. <laughs> you know, like when you're in this spot where it's like, you know, I really don't know how I feel. This is the opposite of that. You know exactly what you feel and you're able to go even deeper and understand things about yourself and the universe and the world that haven't made sense before. The Pisces moon, sextiles Pluto and Capricorn. For these first three days of the week, the best way I feel to problem solve is yes, to look at information and to talk to other people. But ultimately it's like following this inner intuitive river, which has a, a path of its own. And I get the sense that you're on the right track and keep going you'll get the answers as you continue to move forward from within. The moon goes into Aries at 7.48 in the evening. So now we're going from the last sign of the zodiac, Pisces, to the first sign of the zodiac, Aries. And Aries is like dawn. It's like, okay, I've got this day ahead of me. What direction am I going to gallop off into? So it puts the focus much more on your will now. The Aries moon conjuncts Jupiter and Aries, so it inflates that sense. And it sextiles the sun in Aquarius. So I think there's a real desire here to educate yourself, to understand and to connect and help other people. So on Wednesday, especially before the moon shifts into Aries in, in later on in the day, the season of the intuitive, the artist and the healer, that continues and is now coupled with this amazing down-to-earth practicality and um, strength and stamina. And this allows you to be two things at the same time, I feel. Somewhat of a visionary with all of the creative stuff coming in. And you're super practical at the same time. So that's like a match made in heaven as far as I'm concerned. So again, it's amazing for anyone who works creatively or in the healing arts or anything to do with using your intuition. On Thursday, the 26th of January, we've got the Aries moon now forming a conjunction with Chiron and Aries. So with that, the focus shifts and you're like, okay, how can I heal something in my life that still feels like a thorn in my side? It squares Mercury and Capricorn, so I'm willing to do the work. And it sextiles Mars and Gemini. And I'd also like to talk about the work that I'm doing and share my ideas and get feedback from other people. So with this combo, the dreamlike quality now eases off here on Thursday. And you're going to be far more interested in the physical world at this point. The spiritual rest and connection of the last three days, they will have given you lots of energy. I remember I went to a meditation retreat for a weekend and we meditated for 20 minutes every like hour. 
And I came out of that weekend and I remember I was so energized and I was able to really handle difficult tasks and get them done like that. It was amazing. So it's a similar thing I'm feeling here on Thursday the 26th. So pouring all of that energy into your work, I think that's going to make you a bit restless. It's a great day to kind of lighten the, the mood a bit, to, to, so to go visit somewhere new or to spend time with friends and family and just kind of let yourself, give yourself free reign a little bit on Thursday. I think you'll really appreciate kind of easing your way back into the real world after all of this like, like inner um, exploration. It's now outward exploration rather than inner. So you see, so you've done all this work spiritually in the last three days to just go into, you know, what I need to do now. I think that'll make you a little uncomfortable and it'll make you bristle a little bit. On um, Friday, the 27th, oh, we've got Venus going into Pisces. So Venus is the planet of love, beauty and creativity. With it going into Pisces, it's really in the in the most loving and accepting and spiritual placement it has. It goes into Pisces at 3.33 in the morning, which made me kind of take notice. Because 3.33 or 33, officially people say it's not a master number. But whenever there are doubles, and especially triples like this, I pay attention. And 33, and to me 3.33, it's indicative of the ascended masters. So higher beings that work with people in order to bring new insight or change or enlightenment. So Venus in Pisces just, and we've had like this dream state the whole week, except Thursday. Now on Friday, we're going back into that dream state, but with a vengeance, because Venus is really what you love. And with this being in Pisces at 333, to me, I mean, in the most extreme way, it's kind of like a visitation from something bigger. So if you're trying to do spiritual work, if you're trying to have a breakthrough, or particularly if you're looking to get some answers, Friday is the day to do it. And then the good thing about this, <clears throat> excuse me, is that Venus stays in Pisces until the 20th of February. So from Friday the 27th until the 20th of February, I think that's a really amazing time in terms of um, loving the self and spiritual breakthroughs. And also in terms of Valentine's Day, it looks really good because it's likely to create a lot of harmonious, har harmony and acceptance of other people. So it's just kind of blissful and dreamlike again. Mercury in Capricorn squares Chiron in Aries. So that is kind of like the sense of I want to take charge of um, my circumstances and work at them. The Aries moon sextile Saturn in Aquarius and squares Pluto and Capricorn. Oh, that's nice. That I am confident in myself. Yes, that's great. But I also respect the wisdom of other people. And if I want to affect change in my life, I'm going to reach out to those other people. Very sensible. I love it. So with Venus going into Pisces, we are going into Venus's most romantic placement. It brings it back to your spiritual connection, making that very strong and allows for major spiritual breakthroughs. So you have a loving outlook when it comes to those around you and makes life more harmonious and joyful for everyone. Uh, friends, family, colleagues, uh, singles, couples. It's just a time of, you know, like if you think about Pisces and the time of year it happens because the um, astrology is based on the seasons and the northern hemisphere. So Pisces is really back in the day when they'd be sitting in their houses there isn't much going on outside. You have to share, you have to get on with each other. And, and that's really what this is about. It's not just getting on with other people, but appreciating other people, sitting around the dinner table at night and having a meal together, or someone playing the piano and everyone else is entertained. It's that kind of, it's, it's really harmonious in that sense. Um, still artists, healers, intuitives, also benefit, benefit from Venus in Pisces. And there's an abundance of inspiration and energy in each one of those realms. So if you do work in those areas or you would like to work with people like that, Friday again is amazing to do that. And really, the end of January till the 20th of February, if you're an intuitive person, you'll notice that that is really heightened for the next month-ish or the next three weeks.
Saturday, the 28th of January, we've got the moon now going into Taurus at 42 minutes past midnight. So Taurus is an earth sign. It's the second sign of the zodiac. And it's, I've achieved something by Aries. And now it's, let me, let me scan my realm. Let me make it more beautiful. Let me enjoy all my hard work. The Taurus moon conjuncts Uranus and Taurus, making you very adaptable to change. That's really nice. It squares the sun in Aquarius. So you're more self-reliant now than you are reliant on other people. It trines Mercury in Capricorn. Yes, I can work. I want to work and I want to make change appear and even express myself in a tangible way so that other people can engage with my creativity. And it sextiles Venus in Pisces. So Venus is like the Empress in the Tower, right? It's love and beauty and creativity. She rules um, Taurus and Libra. So the fact that we've got the moon in Taurus and Venus in Pisces is spiritual love and physical love and love for your environment and what it looks like and what it feels like. It's very sensual. So on Saturday, it's a great idea, obviously with all of that floating around, to focus on the loving relationships that you have in your life. If it's with other people, great. If it's a spiritual connection, also great. There's this sweet sense of romance that's brought via Venus in Pisces, and it extends into all of your connections, all of your relationships. So with that, I mean, you can have a great laugh with someone if that's what you're looking for, or um, you can cheer someone up, or you can have these really enriching, intimate, personal moments with someone. It's really whatever you want to offer someone that's valuable and receive is very, it's um, an open exchange here. It's really great. Sunday, the 29th of January, we've got the Taurus moon forming a square with Saturn in Aquarius. Okay, so um, you're more interested in kind of the sensual side of things than now being educated. It trines Pluto and Capricorn. I want to work and do rather than sit back and listen and be taught or to teach even. And it exiles Neptune and Pisces because I'm already being taught by my intuition, by my in imagination. It's talking to me. So enough already. <laughs> the sun in Aquarius trines Mars in Gemini. That's interesting. There may be some sort of noise via someone maybe trying to get your attention on Sunday, whether it's a person or groups of people. So um, you've got a lot going on, but I think you're able to multitask where you can do both. Um, if someone needs your help or your ability to problem solve or wants to talk something over with you, certainly do that. And then also focus on using your intuition and creating. Mercury is in Capricorn and it trines Uranus and Taurus. So you have a nice, um, you're like the ultimate um, administrator here. You're like a, um, a, the person who runs a city. You're, you're very much about structure and seeing all the different moving parts and you can get all of those in order. So on Sunday, the shift of... Um, Taurus are now forming a square with Saturn. It kind of hardens the energy a little. So it's not all about dreams and love and creativity and connection. You're, you're for the first time really this week, you're more interested in organization and work, but like in, in um, working to create new structure rather than creative output, you see. If you have anything hanging over you for the coming week, moving into Monday the 30th, um, it's a really good day to use that skill to get prepared and organized and everything is right there so that you can deal with whatever you want to or need to take care of in the coming week. So Sunday is a great day to enjoy your circumstances, but also to prepare and to get organized for things that are yet to come. So I'm really interested. I'm looking forward to this week. It's really going to be... Um, I find, you know, these, especially like the first three days of the week, these kind of dream states where you can go into your intuition and really um, have these am amazingly rich spiritual experiences. Whenever I've had those, they've, you know, taken a few seconds in my life, but I remember them like decades later because they're just that significant to me personally. Okay, so I hope this gives you an idea of what you'll be working with here this week. Um, if you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. When you get to the website, scroll down a little bit. On the front page, there's a bu button, that's a button that says book your reading. Click on that to order your reading with me. 
And in my personal readings, I use astrology, the tarot and numerology, as well as my intuition. And I combine all of them to kind of um, answer your question. So the birth chart, I need your place of birth, date of birth and time of birth to draw that up. If you don't have the time of birth, then please order a chart rectification with me. That's a process where you send 10 or more life events and I actually manually work out your time of birth. Once I have that, then I can draw up your natal chart, which I look at as a wheel. And that's like a blueprint of your soul. It shows me about your life purpose, your relationships, finance, what's coming up in future, specific locations that you may benefit from exploring or visiting or, or moving to. Um, so if you have any questions about what's coming up in 2023 or looking at your own, your own characteristics and where the strengths and weaknesses are and how you can kind of build on that to have an easier experience, then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a look at some of my other videos. We had um, a new moon recently. Um, I, I make separate videos on the new moon and the full moon. So check that out. Um, the daily tower readings to get a different kind of perspective on the daily energy via the tarot. So have a look at some of my other videos if you're interested. Have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you soon. All the best.